Hey guys and welcome to another First Impressions video, the video game series in which we look at a recently released game and I give you my first thoughts and impressions on it. Today we're looking at Loot River which is a roguelite with a difference. It introduces a unique mechanic of puzzle solving with some combat and then random loot drops and your typical roguelite lose everything when you die sort of mechanic. There is a story to it but it doesn't really do a very good job of conveying that. But overall, it's a very interesting idea and does make me want to play more of it. As always, we'll look at the settings first, and then we'll jump into the gameplay and I will show you what it has to offer. There is a sanctum, so we'll look at that first, and then we'll jump into the actual mechanics of the game and the puzzle solving, etc. So without further ado, let's jump straight into it, shall we? So your options then. I'm pleased to report that there is a number of options here to do with accessibility as well as graphics that I really wasn't expecting with an 8 or 16 bit style game. For example, there is focus assist and dead zone, as well as your damage numbers that you can turn on or off if you so desire, blood, time display, minimap and attack warnings. This all allows for the player to customize their game to the, the style that they want, which can make it easier or harder just from little uh, touches like this. They have a full on accessibility uh, menu as well, which comes with font size, platform guides, um, colorblind mode, vibrations on or off if you so desire. Um, it is worth noting that this game is gonna be better played with a controller versus mouse and keyboard. You can turn your screen, screen shake on or off uh, enemy outlines, all that good stuff. This is a really very well thought out accessibility menu. Uh, very, very happy with that. Your controls do seem like they are rebindable, which is good. And it does allow you to time out so it doesn't actually change anything if you press it by mistake. And this goes for your mouse and keyboard as well. Um, very, very happy to see that you can rebind your controller keys. That makes a world of difference. Not enough games do that. Your graphics settings, there aren't that many options here. Um, obviously, it is, again, a top-down 8-bit or 16-bit game. It's it's not going to be graphically intensive, but you can change your window mode, your resolution, VSync on or off, shadows, ambient occlusion, water quality, and noise. Now, we're going to turn the water quality up to normal only. Interesting. Can't go any higher than that. Your audio settings, it does start the volume up at 100%, so I have turned it down a little bit soundtrack is not too bad and there is no voice acting in this so it is just your, your background and your sound effects they're they're what you'd expect there's nothing too amazing here and then your language um honestly if i was to make any changes to this it would be that language would go in accessibility or in normal gameplay um i don't think it necessarily needs its own tab but that's just a subjective change from me overall very very happy with this uh, options menu it's very complete it's very you know coherent it, it's very comprehensive as well it does all the right things and ticks all the right boxes now we're going to look at the inner sanctum as you will uh, which is where you go when you die and you can look at all the different things that you can do there all right so this is your inner sanctum as you can see it is very well designed like everything in this game looks really good there are different rooms that you can go in different areas that you can visit but it is generally speaking a safe zone there are no enemies here there is a shop that you can go to over here that will allow you to spend your knowledge points uh, on permanent upgrades um so as you can see here you've got like a, a skill menu and then you've got your different um, weapons and things that you can equip and change to throughout the game and as you can see it will say owned or how much it is it doesn't look like there's any other buffs or anything like that these are the only permanent upgrades that you can get per run everything else is found in game in loot chests around the the map over here we have your ipfis now this is the the main sort of person that you are going to be talking to and they are going to be the person that will revive you and bring you back to this place when you die there is a story to it but it's kind of hard to follow it doesn't really explain the story very well it's just kind of you're dumped in this area and you've got to go and loop through and, and do stuff and if you die you get brought back to life like it very much focuses more on the gameplay over the story which honestly for a game like this is perfectly fine now 
I want to go into the actual game and show you what I really, really like about this. I like the puzzle solving aspect. It makes it rather fun. So let's do that. All right, we're in the game. And as you can see, we're on a river. Funny that, considering the game is called Loot River. And in the top right hand corner of the screen, you have your minimap, which will show you various routes that you can take. In the left hand screen, it shows you your health, your, I'm assuming, mana, and the um, weapon that you've currently got equipped, as well as any health potions as well. What is nice is that it does show you the buttons that you need to press in order to access these. That makes it um, really, really easy and simple to kind of juggle about. Now, what makes this game unique is the way that you travel between areas. As you can see, you can't jump over certain areas and you can't, you know, swim. So how do you move? You move the actual island beast that you're on right now. And as long as there's room, you can move it any which way you like. This will enable you to discover new areas, uh, come across enemies and find loot chests. I really, really like this movement system. I think it looks phenomenal. I think that the fact that even though it's an 8 or a 16-bit style game, the water effects are still really, really good. It makes me a little bit, ash not ashamed, but sad that it only goes up to normal quality because I feel like with a, a few touch-ups, this could be really improved quite a bit. Now, each of your weapons has a movement style and... As soon as the board touches another enemy piece, your enemies are going to come over and try and kill you. They do a lot of damage and there are different enemy types as well. I really, really like this. I think it's interesting. It's certainly a unique way of moving around and it takes a bit of skill to get to certain areas as well. Now, you can parry, although I'm not bothering because I'm no good at it. Um... And the idea is to just go and explore, try and get stronger as you go. Um, you know, see what you can find. Oh god, I'm being burned. And there are boss levels as well. Now, it was the first boss that I came across and died horribly. He basically one-shot me because I'd already uh, kind of died a lot already. Um, because, as you can see, a lot of the enemies are relentless. There is damage over time, debuffs, etc. And I keep walking into firing blazed pits of hell when you die you get reborn at the sanctuary and then you start again pretty typical for roguelite style there are chests that you can find along the world which will give you you know an ability to upgrade your items but you will lose them when you die also each time you come in each world is procedurally generated so it's different every time as well this game mixes complex puzzles with a really very simplistic but very difficult and challenging combat style with a, a vast variety of enemies right from the offset, which is really good to see. So there you have it. That is Loot River. Let me know in those comments down below what you think. Let me know if you would be better at this game than I clearly am. And I will see you all next time. Thank you very much for watching, guys. Ciao, ciao.